we have the right lead pastor here at Gateway. I'm so glad that Brandon and Erica came to us and he has a heart of a team player. You know, some of the, some of the pastors believe that they, sh they should be the one doing the preaching because that's their given gift. And of course, Brandon does have that gift, but he's so gracious to remember some of the old guys and some of the young guys coming up because he's not building in such a way that it's all around him. And Brandon, we thank you for that, that you've given this a privilege. And if you haven't done it in a while, if you're like me, you get nervous about it. But I really appreciate the privilege. And it's a joy to be able to share the word. And I'd like for this, this morning to continue in Romans chapter 5. And we'll put it up on the screen for you as we stand together and read the first five verses. If we get to it up here. Okay. Therefore, since we've been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God, not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings. Because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character. And character, hope. And hope does not disappoint us. But God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom he has given us. You may be seated. <clears throat> I like this table. God gives me room to spread out my stuff. So it's the pulpit this morning. Um, I want to begin um, with a song that's familiar to me and a few other people in here. And You'll remember uh, the song when we start to look at it. I want to end with it also. I read a story of Fanny Crosby, and it was an interesting thing, the way she practiced hymn writing. She wrote hymns. In fact, if you think about this, between seven and 8,000 hymns that Fanny Crosby wrote in the 1800s, and she died, I think, in 1920 or somewhere around there, lived 90 years, and almost all of her life she was blind. But she lived in close relationship to Jesus. And people would bring their music sometimes before she had her words. And Blessed Assurance is one of my favorites. I hope it encapsulates it encapsulates some of our scripture this morning because we're going to look at scripture that has to do with our faith, the joy that we have in Christ. And this is the way Fanny lived her life. And like I say, she was blind from early in her life. And there was a lady came one day, actually the wife of the originator of Met Life. I can't remember exactly what her name was. And she came in the door of her friend, Fanny, humming this tune. And she said to Fanny, what are the words to my tune? And immediately, Fanny Crosby said, Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. I'm, I started that out way too low, so I won't continue it. But you get, the, you get the drift. Here it is. This is my story. This is my song. 
praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. And I, I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel like that the church has missed this inclination to get up of a morning and start it with a song. And any time during the day that you need encouraged, sing a song. I used to go fishing with a really good friend, his name was Ronnie, and I, I enjoyed going with him because as we were sitting there, whether the fish were biting or not, he was humming a tune. And it was usually one like this or Amazing Grace. And we had our boat, whether full of fish or not, didn't matter, but we had Jesus in the middle of our boat. And so it's good to be able to sing a song like this. The reason I wanted to begin with this, let's go to the fourth slide. It says here, since we've been justified through faith, we have peace with God. There's a reason that we have peace with God, isn't there? This peace was lost, of course, when Adam was tempted in the garden to go a different route than depending on God. He not only lost the life and joy and peace in his heart, but he'd been warned that if you eat of that tree, you will surely die. And so in that inheritance, which we are all children of Adam, we are soon taken from a place of innocence and peace into a place of selfishness, turmoil, and all kinds of feelings other than peace. If we'd fit that into the framework of today, for instance, I just believe that once in a while the pendulum really swings over and we realize that there's something that we don't have in our nation, we don't have in our culture, and we may not have in our families, and that's the peace of God. Because Jesus said, peace I leave with you. Not as the world gives, give I unto you, but my peace I give to you. So where does it come from? It comes from being birthed into the kingdom, being birthed. Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born again. There is a certain peace that the world offers, but it doesn't bring the peace of God that will allow you and I to have an inner calmness in the midst of any circumstances. The peace of God that Jesus gives will stand calm in the storm. And I don't know about you, but I've, this last year, kind of get caught up in the care for our nation and the politics of it. And there have been a few days I've had to get down on my knees and ask the Lord, take that away from me. I want the peace of God. I want the assurance that regardless of what seems to be happening in the turmoil they're in, that you're the true king. You're the king over all of kings. And it's okay. You're in charge. And the apostles knew that. As we read this scripture, we're justified through faith. Now, what is faith? Faith is the thing that Brandon talked about last week. It's, it's the believing that comes through the word. We read the word. We soak in God's word. And there's a faith. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. We have faith because we've heard the Word of God. You get that? We've got to have that first. How are they going to know if they don't hear? How are they going to hear unless the preacher is sent? We each ones are messengers of the Word, so that through faith we have peace with God. So I'm first of all nailing down the point. There's no peace like God's peace. And there's nowhere to get it other than the rebirthing 
of our soul. And because of that, when that happens, we know what we do. We mark that time. We say, here's water. I want to be baptized. My life is starting all over. I want to know God. And when that happens, the Holy Spirit moves in. And we're no longer who we used to be. We have peace with God in the middle of this through faith. And through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. Here's my take on this. It's up here. We're able to stand by grace, in grace, by faith, through our Lord Jesus Christ, and have peace with God. Wanted to just make two quick points. This is the grandest opportunity offered to all mankind. And each of us have to come through the door. Somebody said, God has no grandchildren. Every person has to make that decision in their life of whether or not they want to become a child of God. And as much as I want my children and my grandchildren, and you have too, you have this thing also, you just take them with you. But God says they come through the door. And what a privilege we have as parents and grandparents to be messengers first at home and then in the community and the place where we work and all those kind of things. But I think just as we've looked at it in the book of Acts, our first responsibility is in our home. That's where we have our priorities, how we live our lives, how we speak, what we watch, what we hear. It needs to be bathed with the Word so that faith can arise. And I don't know about you, but I've noticed the innocence of a baby being around Stella recently, and some of you follow uh, Janet's family on Facebook, the most expressive child I believe I've ever been around is Stella. And we've watched her from being a, just a small, innocent baby, joyful about everything, until a few weeks ago, Janet and I went down to baby step for a few days, parents were gone. We tried to get her in her car seat when she didn't want to go. Janet was on one side, I was on the other. And we didn't, I didn't ask for privilege of giving a swat, so we couldn't get her in there. She wrestled this way and wrestled, no, 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 she was not going to go. My point is, how quickly we go spiritually from an innocent beginning to want to get in our own way. And this didn't work very good. We finally gave in for the moment to reassess how we were going to convince her to get in the car seat. You know, it, we, we're not used to losing. And I'm not recommending that we lose. We need to win every one of those battles. We've seen the evidence of when parents have decided, no, they're not in charge, the kids are. That's not the way it's supposed to be. Let me tell you just from a grandparent's point of view. Amen. <laughs> we ought to, just let me stick it in here, we ought to be parents, the parent and the grandparent. We have a lesser role. <laughs> but we need to be people that manifest the roadway forward into faith and into confidence that comes through faith. Now, maybe... Maybe we should uh, move on. But my point here, we too become rebellious kids. And thank the Lord he's given us our Father. that has got a bigger perspective. And Leslie reads some of the rest of the story. Let's go to the next slide. This is the way I wanted to picture it today. Isaiah 35, verse 8, and that whole chapter is good, by the way, if you want to go home and read it. It tells about a highway that God has put before us. And it says here that only the redeemed will walk there. And I like this picture because 
I like the mountains. I thought of Kim and Eddie and their bikes, because I saw this, and they're mountain lovers too. But they're probably we all do. This road takes us places that we can't see ahead. And God has a highway in this scripture. He's called it the highway of holiness. And we get on his road. And we can't necessarily see where it's going, twisting and turning through life. There are many choices that we make. But we need to trust God once we get on the highway. And we also need on-ramps for people that haven't gotten off. So let's remember that God has a highway. And the challenge will always be to stay on the highway. We need to get on it. We need to help others on it. And we need to see what the experience, the surroundings. And Romans starts out with a beautiful declaration. God declares, I've given you evidence that I am. Just look out, take a look at it and see. Isn't God's world beautiful? I just think it's absolutely fantastic and I never get tired of looking at it. Whether it's by the ocean or the mountains or just taking a stroll around, around the city, whatever it might be. If I go in a prayerful mood, you'll notice things you haven't seen before because you'll see it as God's creation. I like to go outside at night and look up at the night sky, don't you? And think, if I'd seen this for the first time, that, thing, that big old ball of fire hanging up in the sky, I'd just be shocked, but I've gotten used to it. But God put it exactly in the right place so that it governed the oceans and every, many other things. And studying the scientific part of this is just awesome declaration of who God is and how much he loves his creation and most of all his church, his people, all humankind he loves. He's not willing that any should perish, but all come to repentance or get on the road. But we need to work on this. How do we stay on the road? And how do we bring others with us? Let me tell you, as you get older, you'll be more concerned about that. Because Jesus said, you better lay some treasures up in heaven where rust doesn't uh, ruin things, where they don't decay. And more and more recently, I've been asking, Lord, I'm headed there in the, sometime in the next 50 years, and I want a few treasures up there, not here. He keeps blessing us here, but we need to take them there. And I've been asking, and I hopefully maybe it'll start that thought in you. How am I going to lay some treasures up there? Because what I've begun on this journey is eternal. It's not about my 120 years here. Because if I match my 120 years to eternity, it's not even a drop in the bucket. So we want our road to lead there. And my hope is there. So if, let's get the picture of the roadway. Let's not leave here without it. And let's figure out tomorrow who are we going to influence to bring with us the on-ramp. The road might get busy. It might have a few slowdowns, a few, a few wrecks along the way. It might even have a few speed bumps that we don't like. But God wants us to stay on his road. Let's go to the next slide. <clears throat> we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Here's the believer's confidence. We will achieve the purpose for which we were created, both here and eternally. However, on the road, we will grow through experience. Let's go to the next slide. This, these are the words that are sometimes challenging. Not only so, but we will also rejoice in our sufferings. Because we know that 
Suffering produces perseverance. And perseverance, character. And character, hope. Let's go to the next one. Let's put it with it. This is what James said. Consider it through you pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Now, if, if there was ever a page of the Bible that you might want to tear out, that first verse, or the first part of that, consider it for pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds. I'd rather say, consider it pure joy, my brothers, when you face no trial of any kind. That would fit me a lot better. Because I don't like problems, and I don't like testings, and I don't like things that get in the way when I'm focused on doing what I want to do. But as I said, God has the bigger picture. And I've learned a few things, and that is to trust his point of view more than my own. There are various trials of many kinds. And I went out yesterday. I was going to hang a storm door. And if Janet would have been there, she would have known my mode of operation. I would have normally told her, I'll be back in a couple of hours, got to go hang a storm door. And I got over there, took the old one down, measured it, then measured the new one, which came in a box with an instruction sheet at least six foot long. And I thought, I don't want to read this. Before I left there, I had made three trips back home, and my one-hour job that I thought, well, I'll, I'll spend two, took me eight hours. And I did not enjoy the process. And I kind of thought why it came along was because I'd been soaking myself in this scripture. So you see, preachers really pay the price. Not in reality. That wasn't even counted as a speed bump. But I'm telling you that when we have a problem, it's there for the purpose of Problems are going to happen to everyone, right? No one's going to escape problems. And there are various degrees of problems. Like I say, that wasn't really a problem. It was just, just an inconvenience. But I didn't enjoy it. But the Lord says here, or the Lord says through James, count it pure joy. That's something that's challenging to me. The only way I've learned to put this in effect is to engage the Holy Spirit. If you found another way, I don't know what it is. But before I left there, I had engaged because I didn't like the frustrations I was feeling. <laughs> and so I'm thankful for songs that I've learned. I like some of the old songs. I like the new ones too. But you need a song in your heart to resurrect through the Holy Spirit so that God can do His work of, what does it say? Maturing me and completing me. He's got a method of getting us where we need to be. And as parents, we can look out and see how this happens in the natural. If you ever need to say no to your child, and the child is determined to get it his way, you, you can't afford to lose that because you're going to point him where he needs to go. Right? And you're going to need to say no. And sometimes it's so, it becomes such a battle that there's a process through which they learn. Now here's another key for, that I've learned that someone told me about that worked. Be consistent and Watch for rebellion, disobedience, 
and disrespect. Watch those three things. I like simple things, easy things to remember. You know, the roll of the eyes, <laughs> the disrespect. If you just correct that once in a while, you're just going to get worse. And God knows how to bring us into a place of maturity that I can't see. And so if I'm not learning my respect and the bowing down of my heart before my father in the midst of a trial, it's going to get worse. And a word problem he has to bring to me to fashion my heart more like his. So he's given us a natural picture that he watches for. Disobedience, rebellion, and what was the third one I had down? <laughs> Disrespect. And it's important that we grow up spiritually as it is important that we grow up naturally. And God's so good to give us the picture of both because he's a faithful, what Jesus say, perfect father. He won't give in like we do just because for convenience sake. I'll catch it next time. God's faithful in us to correct us every time. To set up a situation where we'll reach the intended goal. And that is to be parents ourselves. That produce children, become fruitful in the kingdom. And to move the ball forward until he comes to welcome us into this perfect place that I can only imagine. And there's a song about that. I can only imagine. What will I do? It's going to be great. In fact, it's going to be awesome. Wow. But I'm in no hurry. Is it? But this process that God has, we're to count it all joy when we face trials of many kinds. The worst kind is the kind that you can't understand, even though you ask God. If you've ever lost someone close to you, that's a tough one to handle. Talked to a lady this week that had lost her child. And it had been several years ago, but as soon as she mentioned his name, she went to tears. And I really can't think of a harder problem than for a parent to lose a child. I lost a maid of 47 years, and that was a tough one. And we went through the process of several years. And it didn't go my way. But the blessing of that was when I embraced the process. And God used her to tell me that I needed to embrace it. If you get what I mean, God was there. And it was tough for me to hear. But since that time, that has begun a stake in my spiritual walk with Him. I'm so glad to have met Doc and found out that he and I have walked a similar path in that way. And the joy of the Lord, when he says, your life is not really over here, I'm not through with you. And he brought Janet along, and I'll tell you, we have hardly had anything but joy in our experience. But I nailed this down, and she agreed with it when I met her. Any problem that comes along, we're going to quickly, Hand it over into God's hands. Any question, any, any uh, argument, we're going to put it over into His hands and let Him handle it. And that's the way we go through things. We've made that decision. This is all about getting on the roadway and letting anything that comes along hand it over to Jesus. Blessed assurance. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. 
heir of salvation, purchased of God, born of his spirit, and washed in his blood. Let it be your story. Let it be your song. Praising my Savior all the day long. I tell you, that'll fix 99.9% of our problems. If we'll turn it over, whatever's happening in your marriage, whatever's happening in working out with trusting God with your children, whatever's happening in a relationship with your neighbor, whatever's happening, Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He's out there with his hands outstretched. Even this morning, I'd, I'd like to just let us out of here early by letting the worship team come and let's sing this song to Jesus. And I, I want to especially point out the other verses. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my side. I tell you, this word is rich. I believe some of our hymn writers tapped into the such an anointing. It was like the people that wrote the scripture, they wrote it as they were being moved by the Holy Spirit. And I believe Fanny Crosby lived such a place where she was blind physically but probably saw things that you and I would never see, spiritually speaking, because she could really see the heavens, what was open to her, and immediately the words would flow through. I'm not there. But what I'm saying is that we can get on the highway this morning as we sing this song, I don't see anybody here that's not on that highway. I mean, only you and I, only you could know that. But don't miss an opportunity to stand up and say, I want it. I want on this song, right? I'm coming on board. Before you leave here, you could be baptized. And the other question would be, have you turned it over? Whatever's going on in your life, have you turned it over to Jesus? Have you surrendered it to him? Hope does not disappoint us. We can hope for something and make a bad choice and have to come right back to it again. But hope, this kind of hope does not point us, disappoint us because God has poured out his love. And look where he poured it into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who He has given us. I'm thankful, aren't you, that God made His life, His investment in me. There's a resource we can tap into no matter what's happening around us. We can sing a song. As they're, as they're getting ready to sing that, I, I just remembered I had a... <clears throat> we sing this of course. I'll give you the words to it. You can have a song in your heart in the night, after every mile, after every trial. Anyone can sing when the sun's shining bright, but you need a song in your heart that night. You need a song in your heart that night. And let me tell you, God has a song in you. If you have the Spirit, He's like a well. He'll come out with a song in the middle of your trial. That will bring us to this place of maturity. I want us to stand together and sing this other song. And I'd like to ask you to sing it like you mean. Did you do that? <coughs> sing it. If you can own it this morning, let it out. Sing it back to the one who gave this song, who offered it, and he will take pleasure in it like an incense, right? Isn't that right? It'll, like an incense will go up to him. This assurance that he's hidden 
in our hearts. Yeah. 